Hello everyone, this is Sharpedo43 once again, bringing you all another Wi-Fi battle. This is going to be a battle in the LU tier, and my opponent for this battle is going to be Cabotero, one of Duncan Knee Deep's most privileged moderators in my opinion. I say that because he is in fact a moderator in Duncan Knee Deep's Twitch stream, and he also has quite the privilege to show up in a lot of Duncan Knee Deep's free-for-alls. Like every time I, wa I, I watch um, Duncan's videos on YouTube regarding free-for-alls, I all almost always see Cabotero in, in one of those battles, so in one of those free-for-alls anyway. So, he has quite the privilege to do that. So, and that's true. That is not untrue. Feel free to enlighten me on that if I'm wrong. But yeah, this is going to be the battle, uh, all that aside. Um, he is kind of an interesting fellow because in my opinion, yeah, like I said, he has quite the caliber just by being in a lot of Duncan's free-for-alls, you know, like I said already. And he was streaming battles one time and I actually fig figured, you know what, let's battle him because he's doing Wi-Fi battles and not freaking Showdown, which is the that other format of battling which I personally don't prefer honestly. I know it's more convenient but I just don't prefer it. I, I prefer aesthetics such as this in the Wi-Fi battle. So Cabotero was doing Wi-Fi battles and I figured you know what let's just take advantage of this and actually battle him. Plus it'd be nice to battle one of the moderators of Duncan E Deep. Seeing how a lot of them actually like to be very very strict. But I digress. Um, he leads off with Tapafini and I lead off with Nihiligo and this is actually an ideal matchup for me. I actually decided to play it safe and go for Power Gem. I did know that he had the. I, I was aware that he had Bronzong, but I wanted to, like I said, play it safe. He does switch it in, and I'm going to be forced to switch out now. I do go into Rotom. He does predict this and go for Toxic, which is pretty good on his part, because this thing was obviously a switch into Bronzong. Because I don't think anything else switches into it. I guess Sharpedo can also, but if it takes Toxic, it can just get Toxic stalled in the end, especially when he has Type of Finny still on his team. But um, actually this was still an ingenious play now that I think of it, because the Mystic Terrain is up, so I actually could have switched in Sharpedo here. Pfft, I guess I, I didn't, but oh well, what are you going to do? I'm going to double switch here though into Nihiligo, because I do think he's afraid of the overheat from my Rotom. Because he doesn't know if this is offensive or not, yet. But um, here I, sw I um, switch in Nihiligo, he switches into um, this Alolan Marowak, thinking that I'd probably be able to take this thing out or something. Uh, be able to resist. He would be able to resist. Whatever. Sheesh. I can't talk. I know I can't talk. I know I'm terrible at that, but still. I still play um, pretty decently. And actually take out this Lola Marowak with Power Gym because he did not decide to switch out because he thought I was probably going to double on him again or something. And I'm just going to switch on Nihiligo because I do not want to stay in on this Landersty, which could very well be Scarf. And even if it wasn't Scarf, I still can't take it out with one hit. So I'm definitely going to have to just switch in Skarmory as he goes for the U-turn, predicting me to switch on this Skarmory. And here I thought, yeah, it's going to take Rocky Helmet damage, but surprisingly it doesn't because the Skarmory for some reason has um, Leftovers and not Rocky Helmet. I don't know why I have Leftovers on this Rocky Helmet, but I guess it, part of it is kind of good, so that way I don't annoy Cabotero because I know that this guy gets kind of salty when he's losing battles. If you saw his stream, he, he gets quite pissed when he when he's losing battles very badly. But here he's not losing that badly, he's just getting outplayed a little bit. I switched in Nihiligo expecting, I don't know what I was expecting, I just switched it in. I guess I was predicting him again, and he switched in Tampa Finny, and I'm like, okay, now I'm just switch out back in the Rotom, because I do think he's going to go back in the Bronzong, and he does switch out, and he's definitely going to go back in the Bronzong. Now here, because I double switched on him again, I am confident he's just now going to stay in, so I'm just going to go for an overheat. And just to do a lot of damage, it's not going to KO obviously because this Rotom is not offensive, but it's going to definitely do a lot of damage where maybe Sharpedo can just come in and just crunch it later. But um, yeah, gotta wait for this Toxic to rack up first because he did get the Toxic off earlier on this thing. The Bronze thing that is on the Rotom. So as you can see here, look at all that damage that I got just from Overheat. But because it's defensive, it didn't do as much as you would expect. He does get the Stealth Rocks up, which is really, really good for him because he knows this Rotom is a big problem for him and it's going to take a lot of rock damage every time I try switching it out or pivoting and whatnot. And now I believe here what he does is switch in the Superior because I'm at minus 2 in Special Defense, I mean Special Attack, and he realizes that this is a defensive Rotom, seeing how it didn't do a lot to Bronzong, at least as much as it could have. So here, knowing this, I was anticipating a switch of Swords, whether it be Landris T or, or Superior, and I just went for the Toxic. And I was going to go for Volt Switch, but I figured, what if the Land Rest T comes? So I wanted to just go for Toxic instead. Now here, I definitely didn't think he was going to switch out. For some reason, because I figured what he wants to do is actually get the Least Storm off to get plus 2. And if he has Dragon Pulse, then he can just attack me with that afterwards after getting plus 2. 
But here, what I'm going to do now is just go for the Volt Switch. And what I'm going to go into right now is actually, um, Calfagrius, actually. Because since this thing is now poisoned, I can just send in Calfagrius and just go for the Hex. And I'm confident that even after plus two and Life Orb, I can actually take at least one hit from the Superior with Calfagrius. So, yeah, as you can see, here I go for the Volt Switch, I send in Calfagrius. The Superior went for Leaf Storm, got plus two, and it was a Life Orb set. I was actually hoping it'd be Leftover so I wouldn't be able to take so much damage, but it is. So here, I send in Calfagrius, I'm gonna go straight for the Hex because it's poison now, so it's gonna do a lot of damage. That's kind of the goal right now, is to get as much damage on the Superior as possible before this Calfagrius goes down, if it goes down. But instead of going for an attack, he's actually gonna surprise me and go for Taunt on this thing. I was like, Taunt? I can see why though, because he, he probably expected like a Pain Split or something. But no, I just go for the Hex and just do a lot of damage to the Superior, which is excellent because now this thing is gonna go down to a Toxic. Or to the Poison, basically. Which is excellent. So I don't have to worry about any superior sweep, thankfully. And um, here, I think I'm going. he's going to go into Landry's team. Now here, seeing how he switched it in tells me that he's probably got knockoff or something. And I already kind of had an idea. Uh, I kind of already figured that it's probably Choice Scarf. Just because I haven't seen him go for any other move. No setup move. No um, stealth rocks on his part. So it's definitely... And not to mention the, the Bronzong had rocks. So it's definitely... A, a, um, a choice card one. Now here I send in Skarmory to take the knockoff. For some reason I at the time here I thought it was still um, Rocky Helmet but it wasn't. And now here I make a pretty sick play. I actually just go for the Braver on the Lander's T. And uh, I wasn't anticipating any switch. I just freaking went for the Braver just to get some damage on the Lander's T so that my Sharpedo can come in and finish it off later. But instead he just makes a huge misplay and just goes straight into the Flex Wall and just loses it straight up. I don't think that crit mattered because Braybird is a, is a very powerful stab move for Skarmory despite not being invested in any attack whatsoever and it's x4 effective on Buzz, Buzzwall. I was gonna say Buzzwall, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and now he's gonna send in Thunderous because he did um, weaken my Skarmory enough so that it now goes down to Stone Edge and I didn't want to switch out so I'm just definitely gonna let the Skarmory go down. And now here I'm gonna switch in Calfagrius to go for a knockoff so I can actually um, knock off his Choice Scarf if he decides to stay in. He does not decide to stay in. He probably doesn't want to lose his Choice Scarf, so he's going to switch in Tapu Fini instead. And lose its Leftovers instead. Because... I guess he figures Scarf Landers can still be useful, because I think Earthquake can hit the majority of my team now. With the exception of Rotom. But if he can get rid of Rotom, he can definitely hit everything on my team with just uh, Earthquake, so... I think that's what he's going for here. Now here, I know that I can't do much with Cafagrius because the only attacking move this thing has for this thing is Hex and since it's not status nor can it get status because of the Misty Terrain, I'm pretty much forced to switch into Rotom. Basically to sack it because this thing is also weakened and I already um, got enough damage on the Bronzong that my Sharpedo can just come in and finish it off. So I didn't really need Rotom either. So I just I send it in just to sack it just to be able to get some damage off. Or just to get a free switch in, not get damage. Get damage on what? I don't have anything. But now I have something, I sent in Nihiligo for free without taking any damage because I didn't switch it in, I instead sacked Rotom Heat. Although here, for some reason, I make somewhat of a misprediction and actually predicted him to switch into what exactly? I don't know. But I just went for Toxic Spikes, I took a Surf, which sucks. Looking at what's left of this team tells me that I really didn't even need Toxic Spikes up, honestly. Because the only thing that gets affected by Toxic Spikes is this Tapu Fini. I guess I was expecting him to switch out multiple times and then the Misty Turing will wear off and then he'll bring in Tapu Fini and then take the Tarkus Spikes? I don't know. That was a weird play in my opinion though. Don't know why I made it. But here I um I do surprise him with a mirror coat and just go for um uh, just go for it. Just because um he goes for surf again and I was like would he fall for this would he fall for this mirror coat? And he does. So I get a free um damage on this thing and now I get to take out this um Tapu Fini. Going for Miracle was definitely risky, but I definitely don't see it very often on my Hiligo, so I was thinking he probably wouldn't know I carry it either, so I was actually glad I was able to pull off Miracle on this thing. And, but now he's going to send in Landers T, and here I don't really care about Nihiligo anymore. He actually took out the Tapu Fini, which was mostly what I wanted this Nihiligo for anyways. So now I can just let this thing go down, not worry about switching in to take unnecessary damage with this Landers T, because with Landers T you just can never underestimate it. You can't just switch in willy-nilly because that thing will just do a lot of damage with a stab earthquake with its 145 base attack. So yeah, and not to mention there's always that possibility that these landers can be um, 
choice bandit too, so you just can never play around with it. So here I send in Swamper safely. It's gonna do a lot of damage with Earthquake, but here what I'm gonna do is just go for Skull just to weaken this thing, because if it doesn't die and it kills my Swamper beforehand, I still have Sharpedo, so... I do get the burn though, so this pretty much, um... It's completely, um... Nullified this thing's potential now, basically. Because now I can just take it out with another, um... Scald. Hands down. He goes for another Earthquake, but it's gonna do much less than before. Because... Burn, obviously. And here I'm just gonna take out this Landers with Swampert, which is excellent, because now I can just, um... Finish off his last Pokemon, which is Bronzong, finally, because he's been keeping that thing in the back of his team for a long time now. And this was one of the Mons I actually wanted to get get rid of early in the match, but that never really happened. I went for Scald here, and looking at how much damage this did, I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna just switch into Sharpedo, because this is gonna take way too long. And I already wanted to get this battle over with, too, honestly. So, I just switch, in, I switch out. He misses a Toxic for whatever it's worth, but I'm just gonna switch in Sharpedo anyways, because... First of all, I do want to finish this match with Sharpedo, and second of all, even if I didn't want to finish the match out with Sharpedo, Scalding this thing to death is going to take forever, so I don't want to waste time, so I'm just going to send in Sharpedo right now and just finish this thing off with a crunch. I do not need to Mega Evolve because this thing is naturally faster than, than Bronzong anyway, so... He might have been able to do something had he had, like, Trick Room on this Bronzong, but thankfully that wasn't the case. He just... Because if he did, he would have probably gone for it. Or if he did have it, he probably thought I wasn't going to switch out into Sharpedo either, but I, I definitely did because I wanted to hasten the process, I just wanted to hurry up, get this battle over with, finish this thing off. I am going to Mega Ball with Sharpedo, like I said, I don't need Speed Boost just to outspeed this Bronzong. Even if he got Trick Room up, I definitely wouldn't need it, so there was no point in preserving um, for Speed Boost or anything, so yeah. I do crunch this Bronzong and I do finish off this match and I do win, and that's going to be a good game to Kawatero. And honestly... Fun fact, he actually was hella pissed in this battle, but to, to his credit, he didn't forfeit at least. Because that's kind of what I expect from people who get so angry, which was what he what he, um, what he he um showed when, when he was streaming. He was hella pissed, but he didn't forfeit, so that's like that's kind of cool at least. He didn't forfeit, because I personally don't like when people forfeit. Unless they have a very good reason to forfeit, I don't like when they do it, honestly. I don't care if they don't have win conditions anymore. I just want them to like lose completely. So, props to Cabotero for that, and fun fact, he certainly did a better job in this battle than Duncan Knee Deep did, so, yeah. Thank you all for watching this battle, and, um, hope you guys stay tuned for more battles, because I still have a lot. This was just one of the battles I wanted to get out of my way as well, just because it's a battle against one of Duncan's most privileged moderators, as I like to say it. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Um, Take it easy and stay tuned for more battles and thank you all for watching. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below if you guys want to. And I'll catch you guys later.